Hi, this is Bartosz Czapiewski and welcome to the best pivot table course uh, ever made. It's going to be in simple English explained by me how to use pivot tables and why I think this is the most useful and flexible analytics mechanism inside Microsoft Excel. If you have already downloaded the materials, you can find a lot of folders in here and we will start by opening the sales Excel file. You can see in here a table taken out of uh, an IT system which describes deliveries uh, and sales transactions. The worksheet is called data and what we will do at the beginning of the course in the first lesson, we are going to create the first pivot table to look how it works and uh, how to create one. We go to the insert tab on your Excel ribbon, we hit pivot table, the cursor needs to be somewhere inside the table, you actually don't have to select everything, it's just enough usually that you just uh, place the cursor somewhere and select a cell inside the table uh, range and then you hit insert pivot table and confirm by hitting OK. The interface of the pivot table contains the pivot table itself and the pivot table itself is stored uh, in at the moment in A to C columns um, and uh, it's uh, called a, a pivot table in here but also you can find the pivot table fields where you define what your uh, pivot table will contain. The easiest way to create some kind of calculations and start working with our pivot table is to go to the pivot table fields and just tick the mark next to the field you're interested in. Our first task is calculate the sum of sales by regions or in regions and also by product category. So let's start by placing the sales by just using the tick mark and you can see our pivot table has already been transformed into a number which says it's 31 million uh, of sales. We have 31 million in the whole database and you will see this number all the time during um, this course. Then we would like to split this by regions. So we look for the region field and once again we just use the thick mark and you can see we get the list of the uh, unique regions, region names we have. But what is more interesting this uh, uh, list is going to always uh, update whenever you refresh your uh, pivot table then uh, you will always get a new list uh, an expanded list shorter list of uh, those labels in here. So this is uh, quite a, a fancy feature of a pivot table. You always get the unique list of uh, items in there. And now you can see our 31 million is split uh, by uh, six regions uh, we have. Now I would like to introduce a specific terminology that I'm uh, using always when talking about pivot tables and the name I will refer to is shelf. We've got a lot of shelves in here like values shelf, rows shelf, columns shelf and the filters shelf and what we do we take the fields and place them uh, on some of the shelves. The easiest way to do it is to just uh, thick uh, mark but uh, what you can do also you can drag and drop things uh, on the shelves and also between the shelves. So if we want to split the sales by product category 2 then we can take the field by using your left mouse and uh, drag it and drop it on the columns shelf and you will see right now that the sum of sales is now once again split into three product categories we have. The sum of sales at the end is all the time 31 million but now the detail level of the pivot table uh, is much much higher. Excel pivot table is treated by uh, Microsoft Excel as one dominant object. What does it mean? 
it means that uh, Excel treats all the time the whole pivot table as one object and you cannot just remove, for example, one single column because it contains a piece of a pivot table. What is more, you can expect the following behavior, a pivot table expanding to create more and more space uh, when your needs grow in time. Uh, I will just place a sample comment uh, below my pivot table to show you the filters shelf and the behavior of uh, this particular pivot table. Let's assume we would like to analyze the data we have by the packaging type and the transport type. And you can see that my first um, field placed on the filters shelf has been just placed above uh, my pivot table. But the second one I'm trying to place uh, is being uh, forbidden at the moment because I'm going to lose the comment because my pivot table requires more space than it has right now. So if I hit OK, you will see that my pivot table will go down a bit to make the uh, space for the second uh, filter. And what is the filter and filters shelf? Uh, if you'd like to analyze quickly your data by packaging type and transport type and give uh, the end user, uh, for example, the logistics manager, the options to analyze only the big box uh, tr transactions, then uh, it's quite easy to uh, find uh, those choices on the filter shelf and the same applies also for the transport type. Let's find all the big boxes that uh, were transported by a land and you can see there weren't any and uh, my pivot table is empty right now. I can easily clear uh, the filter by going back to all and also the same with the packaging type. Treating the pivot table as a one complex object uh, applies also to copying and pasting the content of the pivot table. If you want to copy the whole pivot table, you can either select all the fields below the pivot table, or you can select just the header by using this tiny black down arrow to select the whole pivot table. You can then copy the pivot table and place it somewhere uh, below. By doing so, you create a copy which is independent of the uh, previous uh, pivot table. And then you can work a bit with uh, the layout of your new, uh, new pivot table. For example, you can move the fields uh, between um, the shelf. I will take product category and place it on rows above the region. You can see the new layout uh, appearing in here. But I can also take the product category and place it below the region on uh, rows shelf. I can also take the product category and take it out by using the left mouse button out of the uh, pivot table fields. And by doing so, you make this field disappear. Having one table above the other pivot table is quite risky inside Excel because if your um, uh, first pivot table is going to grow by size, for example, uh, someone is going to place uh, the customer segment field on the rows shelf, you will see an error which says a pivot table cannot overlap another pivot table report. There is not uh, enough space for us. Uh, so usually you try to avoid this kind of yeah, this kind of layouts. Another common feature uh, of a pivot table is the disappearing pivot table fields. If you select the cell out of the pivot table range, you can see these fields disappear. If you go back and select the inner part of your pivot table, you can see the pivot table fields uh, come back uh, where uh, they have their place. Let's shortly sum up the first exercise and the feature of a pivot table. You can see it's quite a flexible mechanism that allows you to quickly slice and dice with your data uh, and create some kind of calculations that you can um, refer to as some if if you just have uh, one uh, thing on a row, one field on rows, 
or some ifs if you would perform a more complex uh, calculation. But the advantage of using a pivot table is that it's very flexible. You can easily drag and drop fields between the shelves and you easily produce more and more complex analysis which would be quite hard to get just by using the some ifs uh, formula or if not quite hard then certainly uh, time uh, consuming. This is it as regards the first exercise we can call the worksheet 1.1 and now inside the same file we can move to the next do-it-yourself exercise.